The ideas expressed in the following presentations are those of the speakers and do not necessarily reflect the views of ACI or its committees. ACI web sessions are recorded at ACI conventions or other concrete industry events and will be made available for viewing free of charge for one week. Thereafter, they will be archived on the ACI website or added to ACI's online CEU program, depending on their content. You can earn continuing education credits through ACI's online CEU program. Visit www.concrete.org to register. ACI conventions provide an opportunity for networking and for keeping up to date with the latest in concrete technology and practices. The final speaker in our session today is Dr. C.S. Poo. Dr. Poon is a professor and associate head of the Civil and Environmental Engineering Department of Hong Kong Polytechnic. He specializes in teaching and research related to concrete technology, including non-destructive testing and eco-friendly construction materials. Today he's going to be talking about the use of thermography to investigate the durability of high-rise buildings. Dr. Poon? If you need a pointer, that is okay. Um, good afternoon. Uh, thanks for staying up uh, so late, until so late that we can share some of the um, Hong Kong experience in uh, evaluating um, concrete structures. Um, Hong Kong is a special place. We have a uh, modern society, but we have still have a lot of old buildings. And um, my topic today is how to assess uh, building defects particularly in external walls by non-destructive uh, indirect thermography. This, um, the research is uh, funded by the Hong Kong government, Innovation Technology Commission, and a lot of assistant work being provided by my postdoc as well as um, a number of technicians and students. Well, Hong Kong, it's a beautiful place. If you haven't been, please I'll come and visit us. We are very crowded in the urban area, but we still have a lot of countryside where you can go hiking and swimming. And we have a lot of concrete buildings, both for residential and for commercial purposes. And um, they are, some of them are quite old, over 30 years old. And recently, Hong Kong has promulgated a regulation that all the old building older than 30 years old has to be examined mandatory because in most of our buildings, either it's residential, commercial, or industrial, um, mostly concrete, and the external wall are rendered by plaster, of course, and, and sometimes by tiles. And this is a, a very traditional for Hong Kong buildings, which is maybe very different from in North America, where you have mostly, I don't know, in residential, you have timber and uh, brick when yeah. In commercial, maybe uh, you have steel structures. Um, so the external render tiles are with aging and also with the weathering. Hong Kong is hot in the summer, not very cold in the winter, but a lot of rain. So may deteriorate the bonding, may deteriorate, and we have occasionally falling off tiles rendered from from high from 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 top of the buildings and then injure many uh not many I mean quite a few number of people. So there's a mandatory requirement for building owners to examine the buildings uh every once once every ten years. A very rigorous um requirement. So traditionally we do uh examination of building by, by visual, visual inspection, by looking at it, or using a telescope, help with the if telescope by visual examination, see whether, see whether there are surface defect. And judging from that, you, you, you say that the, the, the external wall finishes is intact or not. And, and, and sometimes we also do hammer tapping, 
and this is done on the ground. But you have, but when you have um, a high elevation, you need to have scaffolding, and then the sound, okay, the echo will tell you something about what is underneath, okay, whether it's have voice or defect underneath, and also we can do pull out tests, and which is not destructive, which is destructive. We we have uh, using a force to extract extract the the finishes from it and and assess the uh, his bonding in terms of uh, pull out strength. And this is very this is not accurate. This is very time consuming. And we sometimes require scaffolding erection. This is destructive, and also requires scaffolding erection. And 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 so it's not very convenient to examine whole building, uh, uh, and also very extensive um, areas. So we are proposing to government to use this um, non-destructive diagnosis uh, by infrared thermography, and. We has an advantage is it's non-destructive. It can examine an area, uh, extensive area, very conveniently, and we can tell us uh, information uh, before a more intrusive examination could be done. For example, uh, uh, the pull-out test. So, this is the, the requirement that we call the mandatory building inspection scheme in Hong Kong, which is very unique in Asian country, Asian country. I think we have old buildings, we have very tall buildings as well. Some of these buildings may be 20 story, 30 story, even 40 story high. So really, we cannot really uh, do very um, uh, tedious work of erecting scar buildings to examine the buildings before uh, uh, quantitative measurement can be done to assess how to, what's the cost of repair. So this is the requirement of the Hong Kong government. And so we are pro proposing to supplement the traditional visual inspection, hammer tapping, pull off string test by the infrared thermography. But infrared thermography is not new, okay? People have done it and it's been used routinely even in Hong Kong. But mostly it's done by a passive we call qualitative. Qualitative to mean it tell you oh, very roughly whether there's some okay problem underneath of the surface. But it cannot tell you in 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 real time the exact quantitative what's the what's the uh, extent of deterioration in terms of uh, area coverage. So we are proposing to 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 provide a quantitative measurement of the defect using infrared QIRLT. So this is the principle behind infrared thermography, uh, where we have in uh, solar radiation, if there's a deep bond, okay, this is insulate. This is insulator. Sorry, and um, then the the heat will not be easily dissipated into the interior concrete, so the surface of the deep bond area will be hotter, and it will be captured by by the uh, infrared camera if it was our. Uh, and then compared with the nearby area, so this is hotter, this is not as hot, so we could uh, deduce that there's some something going on there. It may be a deep bomb, okay. So yes, so the warm area indicates a uh, problem. So this is actually is Polytechnic University. This is um, relatively a new building, so, okay, only uh, five to five years old. This is Covered with tiles, okay, finish, and this is visual photo. That you cannot detect anything, okay, visually. You cannot detect anything. But when we are well, captured by infrared camera, we can see something that, okay, there are obviously some the red red area indicate higher temperature areas, and and this is due to the construction zones. Uh, which is indicate different different use of uh, use of different materials, but in, in this particular area, this is something that we is of concern. We think there is a deborn there, and and because it's hotter, and uh, this is a temperature scale of um, from here is uh, from the well the color could be arbitrarily allocated, but the, normally we 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 outside 
the hot area with red color and the cooler area with blue color. And this is a temperature scale of uh, 18 degrees Celsius to uh, 36 degrees Celsius. The, 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 the very hot area is about 30, 33, 34 degrees Celsius. Okay. So we can see there's some, some something underneath. Okay, that there may be of a concern. And this is also on campus. In our campus, this is a, a, a it's not a flat surface, but it's a, a round surface. But still see there's uh, some concern area. But this is traditionally done in a qualitative infrared way, meaning uh, the temperature scale. This is the same. Okay, this is the same area of the building, and the operator of the infrared camera can adjust the temperature scale. For example, he is from 22 degrees Celsius to 34. This is 22 to 36. This is 22 to 40. This is 22 to 48. And you can artificially adjusting the scale of capture of where by which the image is captured and you have different results. Okay. This may be a deborn area and by, by by adjusting the temperature scale, you, you cannot really see the debound area. So this is very unsatisfactory because this would be making a quantitative assessment very difficult. It's very subjective to the operator's uh, manipulation of the camera. So this is only qualitative. So we cannot be used as a quantitative measurement. So we are proposing to improve on that by using something that we propose to 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 uh, to do it in a quant quantitative way. Okay, this this is the requirement of the scheme. And actually for the qualitative measurement, Hong Kong has already um, part of the concrete in of Hong Kong has a concrete institute. Okay. It's not ACI, it's Hong Kong Concrete Institute. And we publish um, we publish um, a COP a core practice on using uh, infrared thermography for assessing buildings in a qualitative way. But the deficiency of this particular publication is that uh, there's not there's no way to measure the, the bond quantitatively, and also the the parameter that is being used is not backed up by science or backed up by uh, research. So we are trying to overcome this two difficulties. So the focus of this uh, study or our presentation is the how to making a uh, capture image okay, by infrared camera and then turn it into a more quantitative uh, assessment of the, the bond in terms of areas. And actually the, the imaging of the thermal of the infrared camera or the result of the imaging could be affected by many factors, including environmental factors like the change of heat in intensity, whether it's sunny day or cloudy day, uh, the angle of viewing and the relative angle of the object and, and the camera and wind speed. And the material, of course, would affect the result, the material, the type of material that is being imaged, and also the instrumentation as, as well as also the software that is developed for quantitative measurement. So we're trying to 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 provide standardized um, method to so that a core practice can be produced for such a measurement in Hong Kong. So we, we've done a lot of experiments. Uh, this is um, a fabricated uh, we call a slab um, on the roof of the campus where embedded floor, okay, embedded Boys are, 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 are put inside the, the slab and covered with render. And the render thickness could be adjusted and the diameter of the floor can be adjusted. And inside the shed, we put the camera. This is the infrared camera and then with the data uh, logging system with a computer. And then we put it there and then uh, with the turning of the with time, of course, the sun will go down the, the, the specimen and then we capture the, the infrared signal uh, and then 
do some processing and then to try to estimate the size of the the the, the defect inside the specimen. And this is the thermograph that we capture, and this is the um, the depth. Okay, the depth of the of the floor that inside. Actually, on the surface you cannot see anything because it's covered by render. But inside there are defects and there is voice. Okay, and and by the infrared camera, it can easily the, the defect can be easily be can is we can see the defect quite easily. And with different depth, okay, at different depth um, and different areas of the defect, it could be quite easily seen. But the the problem or the the issue is we try to quantify the the amount of defect in terms of areas. So so with the with time, okay, from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m., the sun is moving around, of course, and then we can. This is the this is um, the image capture at 10 a.m. But we turn the normally okay a colorful image, which is indicating the temperature. Different color indicates the different temperature. The red, of course, is hotter. We turn this all these color images to grayscale because we want to digitize it because you cannot really digitize a color image. We turn it into grayscale by our, our in-house developer uh, software, and the grayscale is uh, sealed to 225, and then we try to um, do some processing of the image to try to estimate the defect size. And in the afternoon, of course, uh, where the sun is, is not direct uh, shining on the sample, and then the the there were different effect coming out, and this is the cooler, this is the hotter, and this is the cooler. So, the experiment that we did is using uh, artificial defect embedded into the specimen at different proper depth with different and also different diameters, and visualized by the infrared camera, and then try to determine. Quantitatively, the area of the defect using the Im the infrared uh, imaging and compare with the known okay with the known uh, diameter of the area and see whether the method developed would be appropriate. This is the some of the this is the detailed experiment and. The first step, there's a number of steps involved, okay, the, the, the methodology that we developed. First of all, is turn this um, area of interest, we call region of interest, okay, and maybe it's not too sharp, we have to turn it by okay, an algorithm, algorithm that we developed to turn it into a better imaging by capturing more image, okay, over time. By averaging and then uh, processing, we from a single image we turn it into a better image, and then this is we turn the we turn the um, color image into a grayscale image by an algorithm, and then we also define define the change. Okay. We find the change from inter area to a deborn area by using a differential um, methodology that we use by defining the maximum. This is the pixel values, pixel value, which means the in grayscale is the pixel value. You can say is a temperature profile. Okay, the temperature profile, and then we defined. The start of the deborn is the maximum gradient point, and then the end of the deborn is the maximum gradient point at the descending curve. So, by doing that, we can define the start of the deborn point and as, as well as the finishing of the deborn point. And this is a perfect case because it's a circular deborn that we artificially implant in it. Of course, uh, for irregular shape of the bond we need to do more uh, 
manipulation of the data. So we have do we cap we carry out the uh, um, processing in one direction and in another direction and then we combine these two images into making um, a final image and then further processing by defining a two to five okay a piece of uh, image to a one a binary image meaning the in we define the inter area as this is inter area that means they are bonded as one and then the, the the bond area as zero. This is a binary image. So we can categorically um, characterize the bond uh, quite quite um, clearly here. And then we can we and then we need to step four, this is final step, we need to this there's not there are no dimension here, so we need to convert all this um, imaging into the dimension by compare the the image of the bond and then compare with the actual size of the specimen, and then we can calculate the the um, size of the deep bond. Okay, so. After a serious experiment, we can know that, for example, in the hot days, in, which is about 33 degrees Celsius, and we can see that the size of the actual D bond, this is the blue line, okay, this is the blue line, the size of the actual D bond, and 40 something uh, square meter, so, sorry, square centimeter, and then <coughs> this is the Different depth, okay. Different depth of the um, um, cover depth, and then we can see with when the cover depth is too big, 17.3 or 20.3 mm, actually the estimation is not as good compared to the actual size. But when the cover depth is okay, is less than 15 mm, the estimation of the deep bond area is quite respectful in a sense we have a very good prediction or, or estimation of the bond even though we cannot see it. okay we can estimate quantitatively by by by, by QIRG. Similarly in a cold, cold day okay 20 degrees Celsius for example we can also estimate the deep bond size quite uh, satisfactory. And from plate at cover depth larger than 7.9 mm are not measurable. Okay, for this particular case, for a cold day, then the cover depth is very certainly affecting the measurement. So this is a summary of the result that we had. This is the actual the bond, the diameter that we artificially implant on it. This is the area based on the calculations, and that is the cover depth. And then we can actually but this is the, the the result that we got from our QRLT measurement, and then after the <coughs> algorithm that we process the result, we can the relative error is less than ten percent. So we are quite quite satisfied with that. But when the the bond size is small, and when the cover depth is big, then we then the error is much higher, so we still need to um, figure out how to improve on that. But when we but we know, okay, when the deep bond when the deep bond diameter or when, when the actually the, the, the defect is big and the cover depth is not too big, then we, we are very confident that this could be used for estimation of the actual deep bond size. We are also doing more work on seeing the effect of the viewing, viewing angle because normally we in the past in the in the in the data that I presented the viewing angle or the the, the, the orientation of the camera to that of the sample 
is perpendicular. Okay, so it has a perfect viewing. But when we turn the sample, then there's a different story. When they turn the sample, and 20 degree, 30 degree, until 50, you can see we can we can still see the deep bond. But when it's higher than 60 degrees Celsius, then the deep bond is very difficult to see. And sometimes we need to do it because um, the buildings are in Hong Kong are tall, and then the cameras normally is positioned on the ground floor, and then viewing on okay by angle to the to the um, to the building facade, for example. And then, depending on the angle of viewing, there may be have different results. And we do not want to do, we do not want uh, different different operator or different imaging operation have different results. So we need to specify, for example, uh, the viewing angle should be less than 50, 50 degree, degrees in order to get a, some reliable result. So so that's, that's what we try to do. OK, I think I'm, I'm finished. I'm finished. And this is the conclusion, and then we are still working on it, and uh, the project will finish by end of next year. Thank you very much.